Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Albert, and welcome to an all new video. Guys, I know it seems like it's been forever and a day since I've been on here. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for your patience. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. I highly, highly appreciate it. This is part two, A Road to a More Peaceful Life. In the last video I did a couple weeks ago, we looked over the psychological you know, sense of it. How, what the psychologists say, what the brain doctors say on how to be more peaceful and certain things that we can do to perhaps have a more peaceful life. In today's video, we're gonna look at the biblical sense of it to see what does the Bible say about peace? What does it say we can do to be more peaceful? What does it say we can do to help others be more peaceful? But before we get to any of that, we're gonna get back to our old stomping grounds, our old tricks, and get to our quote of the day, which is brought to us in part by A Fruitful Life, and it says, Love sees with the heart, transforming the plain and simple into something indescribably beautiful. Love it. Well, guys, without any further ado, let's wrap this intro up and let's get started. Hey guys, welcome back. Thank you once again so, so much for clicking on this video. I highly appreciate it. Thank you to all my loyal subscribers out there who have stayed loyal to my channel. And guys, you know, sometimes life just gets in the way. You got a lot going on right now. I'm working six days a week and on Sunday I'm either doing stuff here at the farm or I'm hanging out with family. So it's really difficult really for me to find time to be able to sit down and record a video. But I'm very thankful and blessed that I have some time today. Today's been a really fun day. My mom and I, we went riding. My dad has been cutting hay on the farm, which is next to ours. He has been cutting hay there for the past couple of days and today they were rolling it. So my mom and I took the side by side out to uh, go check on him, look at everything. Absolutely beautiful. Over there, the weather here where we live at has been absolutely gorgeous outside. I think that maybe the high today was maybe 70, and at nighttime it's getting chilly around 40 and 50 degrees. So let, let you know the fall is on its way. But we had a great day. We did a lot of riding on the side by side, and then um, I helped my papa. Uh, we had a, a pig that he raises pigs here on the farm, and one of them is pregnant. And so when they get pregnant and almost ready to give birth, we put them in the barn so that way the mother and the baby stay safe out of the weather and things like that. So I helped him do that. Just had dinner with mom. She made some absolutely delicious barbecue uh, roast with some fried potatoes homemade cheddar biscuits i think they're low carb she said but it was absolutely delicious but that's been my day today it's just been a nice day to sleep in and just be able to just be with family and have fun and which brings me to what i want to talk about today today has been such an amazing and peaceful day because i have nothing i need to worry about Okay, I know that God is, number one, first and foremost, God is always on my side. He will always be by my side. I have an amazing family that I'm so blessed and fortunate that I can spend a lot of time with. I have a job that I have to go to tomorrow morning, and I'm really thankful that, to have a job. I have my own vehicle. I pay my bills. If you do things that you know you're physically supposed to do, such as pay the bills on time and do this and do that, then you can really have a sense of peace. But in order to have real, true peace, peace you need to be a child and believer in god and know that no matter what god is always in control we have an amazing website here that i did today's research on for the video it's called christianity in view.com i will leave a link in the description below to check out their website they have amazing several 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 different bible study topics everything from adoption to the blood of christ the body of christ death love worry suffering faith. They have so many different Bible studies and really descriptive. And I took a lot of notes from this. And so I want to go get to my notes of what I took. But the word peace in the Bible comes from the word, the Greek word, right here on the bottom of the screen. I believe maybe it says irenai. It's a lovely, I love the word. It looks really, it looks, just looks like a nice word. But this is the word, it's a Greek word that refers to a mental attitude of tranquility based on a relationship with God in the Christian way of life. It is a word which describes the result of a person's correct response to God's grace. The Bible uses peace in two ways. There's personal peace with God, which comes when a person accepts Jesus Christ as their Savior. And then there is peace of God, which is available on a daily basis as the believer participates in the Christian way of life according to the plan of God. Now, if you are a child of God, you've read the Bible, you know, of course, we have the Ten Commandments and we have law, laws, I guess you can call them, and rules and things, ways of life that God wants us to live by. And if we abide by all of those, albeit there may be stressful times in the physical world, such as bills or, you know, and 
some kind of disagreement in your family, in your love life, in your work life, something that may be trying to cause you some negativity or try to make you just be unhappy or unpeaceful. Know that no matter what, God is always in control. So what you do is you give up that problem, that issue, give it to God and say, God, I know you can handle this. I know you're going to handle this. And I know that you are always in control. I'll give it to you in the name of Jesus. And therefore I'm going to be at peace because God, you are in control. Now that doesn't mean that you can go out and do stuff. You know, you're not supposed to be doing that. God, God, you're in control. I'll be all right. It'd be like driving 150 miles an hour on a highway and be like, I'm not going to wreck or I'm not going to get pulled over by a cop because God is in control. That's not how God works. You have to abide by the ways of life that God wants us to live and as long as and as long as you do that and you follow those ways of life you follow those laws you follow those principles then any other kind of side negativity that tries to come at you give that to God it's plain and simple second Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 says that for God has not given us a spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind peace with God is never available apart from grace the cross of Christ is the focal point of grace and is the source of peace. Jesus Christ is our eternal peace. Romans chapter 5 verse 1 says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now be honest, have you ever went through a situation in your life, a hard time, a bad time, you know, a sad time, a time that wasn't necessarily happy or peaceful? During that time, did you really honestly give that situation to God? Be like, God, there's literally nothing else I can physically do about this. It is up to you. It is in your hands. I give it to you. And therefore, I rebuke in the name of Jesus any sort of more negativity coming from the situation to bother me because God is in the troll and therefore I'm going to be at peace. Then you have those people who are going through a hard time who don't really recognize God and maybe perhaps are not a true child of God or believer in God, but yet they're put in a really difficult or hard time in their life. And then that's when they say, God, if you get me through this, da, 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 that's not how God works. You have to be a believer in Christ. You have to be a child of God and live those ways of life. Then God will be able to give you peace. You have to have faith. Faith is the number one ingredient in order to have complete peace in your life with Jesus Christ. That we may not be able to physically see Jesus. He may be, we may not be able to see him sitting beside of us or touching him or anything like that. However, I always have said this for a long time and I've said it in other videos before, before you perform an action in your life, before you do anything in your life, especially a big decision, just take one second and be like, if Jesus is standing here beside of me, because he is, believe it or not, since Jesus is standing here beside of me, would I, would I do this action since he's standing here watching me? Would I do it or would I not? And that can go through a plethora of different ways or different situations in your life. Whether it's something small such as buying a new outfit or whether it's something big as far as Maybe getting in a new home, getting a new job, getting a new vehicle. Or maybe it's something in the middle like, my friend's invited me to the bar tonight. Should I go? That would be fun. But with Jesus is right there beside of you, would you really tell Jesus, uh, Jesus, I want to go to the bar and have fun with my friends? So you've got to have faith and you've got to really just have grace in your life and to know that if you are a true believer and you are a true child of God and you have good intentions and God knows your intentions. I don't know your intentions. Your family don't know your intentions. Only you yourself know your exact true intentions and what they are in your life. Now, God knows them, period. He knows every single thing about you. So you cannot be the type of person to be like, well, okay, well, I'll go out to the club tonight, but God, he'll keep me safe. That's not how God works. And I've already said this before, and you should already know this. The book of Ephesians has a really great chapter, which I took a cu couple notes on here. It's in uh, chapter 2, verses 14 through 18. And what it does is it provides a good illustration on how God made it possible for anyone to have peace with God, with special emphasis on the fact that such different types as Jews and Gentiles have been provided for. Verse 14 deals with peace as a product of reconciliation. Verse 15 explains that the enmity between God and man, that which we call the barrier, was abolished once and for all. Then we look at verses 16 through 18, which explain that the enmity has been slain for both Jews and Gentiles, so that now those who were near to God, the Jews, and those who were far off, the non-Jews, 
were being brought into union with Christ through the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Whether you're a believer in God or whether you're not, we're talking here specifically back in the days when the Bible was written. If you know someone who's not a child of God and you know that you honestly feel like you can make a difference in their life, they're a non-believer, they're walking the life that God would not really approve of, pray for God to give you the strength to be able to go to this person because no matter what, we're all the same. And when we are baptized into the Holy Spirit, we are all children of God. So pray God to give you the strength and the motivation to go talk to this person. That way they can be your brother or your sister in Christ. You can help them come to be baptized into the Holy Spirit. Now in our lifetime, we can literally have peace every single day on a daily basis. When the believer responds by faith to grace, God provides many blessings which can result in great inner happiness. Isaiah 26, uh, chapter 26, verses 3 to 4 says, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. You've got to have trust. Trust ye in the Lord forever, for in the Lord is everlasting strength. In the Christian way of life, peace comes through fellowship with God and daily growth, advancement in spiritual things which brings stability, a relaxed mental attitude, orientation to the plan of God, occupation with Christ, and the ability to employ faith, rest, principles in all areas of life. So no matter what area of life you feel like maybe, oh, I got this, I don't need God help me in this area of my life. Every single area of your life, you need to incorporate God, incorporate faith, and incorporate your belief as a child of God into that in, into that specific area of your life. Because no matter what, you know, even though it seemed maybe kind of seemed kind of overwhelming every single part of your life, but it is important to involve God in every single detail of your life. That way, you can have complete peace in your life, knowing that you are doing what God wants you to do, and that God will have your back no matter what. Peace or tranquility precedes the enjoyment of prosperity. It is part of the preparation for prosperity. One must have peace to have the capacity for prosperity. God may hold prosperity back until there is capacity to enjoy it. Acts chapter 9 verse 31 says, Then had the churches rest through all Judea and Galilee and Samaria, and were edified, and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, were multiplied. Any loss of peace is followed by an adjustment to the plan of God, confession and restoration to fellowship, faith rest and relaxed mental attitude, and peace in the new situation. So let's say for example you got a new job or you moved to a new place, a new location, completely different from where you were before. You want you started this new job and you're going in, you're nervous, you're anxious, but you're excited, but You've prayed about this job. You're like, all right, God, if this is the, you know, the job that you're meant for me to have, I pray that I get it. And I know if I get it, it was your plan and I will follow through it accordingly. Now, when you're going into this job, it is important to continue just because God got you the job. doesn't mean, okay, God, thanks. Good gang. We'll holler at you later. You keep him incorporated in your life no matter what it is. Not just a job. You're moving somewhere. God, if it's your plan that I do get this new house, I pray that I get it. And if I do get it, then I know it is your plan. And continue to incorporate him in your life. That way you can grow stronger in your relationship with God. And no matter what, when you give all of the sadness and all of the anger and all of the negativity throughout your life, as long as you are continuing to cor correlate God in your life, know that God has got it all and you can truly be at more peace. Guys, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I know it's short and sweet, but it's something I really wanted to talk about, finish this video up, and have some more plans for more videos coming up in the future. I hope you enjoy them as well. Leave a comment below if there's anything you would like me to talk about or to study and bring to you in my sense of teaching or whatever you want to call it. But I do hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope that everyone out there is staying safe and staying healthy. And of course, as always, you're spreading love, peace, and kindness to everyone around you. Bye, guys.